Lemon Grab is one of the most overlooked characters in Adventure Time. Most simply discount him as one-dimensional comic relief, but his abusive relationship with his creator, his inhuman treatment, and his tragic de-evolution into something unrecognizable create a character that is anything but one-dimensional. A character so bizarre and devastating that he could only really exist in the world of Adventure Time. Lemon Grab first appears in the episode Too Young. Princess Bubblegum lost some of her candy parts and now she is a child, and because Lemon Grab was the first candy person, he becomes the temporary ruler of the Candy Kingdom. Some important facts about Lemon Grab. Lemon Grab is the first candy person. Princess Bubblegum describes him as a failed experiment. This is the first of many parallels he has with Frankenstein's monster. Lemon Grab lives in a remote and isolated location consisting of just him. Okay, so to summarize the rest of this episode, Princess Bubblegum and Finn do not like the fact that he is in power, so they try and get him out by pulling a prank on him. The prank involves Princess Bubblegum leaving him mean notes, and Lemon Grab reacts by performing collective punishment and locking everyone in a dungeon for one million years. Princess Bubblegum, Finn, the candy people, and everyone else combine their powers to turn PB back into her 18 year old self, and together, with the power of friendship, blah blah blah, they basically kick Lemon Grab out of the castle. So, let's break down some of Lemon Grab's character. Lemon Grab reacts really intensely to things not going the way he intended, but he understands and reacts positively to rules and order. He took control of the Candy Kingdom because it was in his legal right, and when it was no longer in his legal right, he accepted defeat. Throughout the episode, Lemon Grab seems to have a hard time feeling or expressing positive emotion. When Peppermint Butler shows him the prank may have been a joke for laughs, Lemon Grab tries to imitate what a laugh would be like as if he is incapable of laughing. <laughs> 12 years dungeon. Another interesting thing to note is when walking away from the Candy Kingdom, he mutters something inaudible to himself. In the Latin American dub, he says, Nades me quiere, todos me odian, which translates to, Nobody loves me, everybody hates me. This is our first hint into Lemon Grab's desire for connection. Him locking everyone in a cage may have you believe he doesn't want to connect with others, but this line indicates that he desires some kind of love or at least interaction, he's just unsure of how to achieve it. This could be his motivation for taking over the Candy Kingdom. Lemon Grab's second appearance is two seasons later in the episode You Made Me. The episode starts off with Finn and Jake realizing that Lemon Grab has been sneaking into random candy people's houses and watching over them. When Princess Bubblegum finds out about this, she immediately locates Lemon Grab and tells him that yes, it is his right as an Earl to look over his citizens, but it's creeping her out. Lemon Grab, why are you stalking my peeps? I am within my rights. Yeah, but what are you doing? It's creeping me out. I am the Earl, the Earl of nothing. What do you mean nothing? Castle Lemon Grab has no citizens. You have excess candy. You must donate. But you don't get along with others. I don't understand you, Lemon Grab. No one does. This dialogue reveals that Lemon Grab has a desire to be around people. He has a desire to be understood and a desire to lead. These desires conflict with the way he is, and he blames this conflict on his creator. I am alone, and you made me like this. You are my god. Lemon Grab saying, you are my god, is an allusion to the theme of playing god in the book Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster's first words are, I ought to be thy Adam, as Adam was god's first creation. In Frankenstein's monster's worldview, Frankenstein is god. This could give us some insight on how Lemon Grab treats Bubblegum. Seeing someone as God dehumanizes them and gives you something to bestow your problems onto. Lemon Grab doesn't even try to emphasize with PB because it's pretty much impossible to emphasize with God. After this interaction, Princess Bubblegum understands that Lemon Grab feels alone and sends three candy citizens to castle Lemon Grab for him to rule over. But a week passes and Lemon Grab is back in the Candy Kingdom watching over the citizens again. What happened to your candy citizens? They didn't like my lemon styles, I like this way better. Princess Bubblegum tries to explain how to properly treat the candy people, but Lemon Grab seems literally incapable of understanding. I look in the lemon heart you gave me and see my way to act, that must be right. Lemon Grab lacks empathy, he can't see someone else's way of life and tries to force his own way onto others. The problem isn't in his way of living, it's his inability to understand other equally valid ways of living. 
PB tries to teach Lemon Grab how to tend for candy people by bringing one of them to him, but his inability to understand them makes them very uncomfortable. This spirals into Lemon Grab becoming outraged and physically harming the candy person. Princess Bubblegum suddenly remembers the candy people she donated to Lemon Grab. Lemon Grab Kingdom's entrance is completely empty except for a statue of himself. Upon entering its area, there are many rooms containing baseball gloves and nothing else. This is a representation of his longingness for his mother, Princess Bubblegum, to relate to him via the metaphor of a father playing catch with a son. I think now is a good time to talk about Princess Bubblegum's neglect of Lemon Grab. Her creating him and never trying to understand him or love him shaped his character and is a reason for a lot of his problems. Is Princess Bubblegum a bad person for creating the sentient life and leaving it with no attempt to understand it or help it? PB actually has a history of tinkering with sentient life and then disregarding it. Another example of her doing this is in the episode Rattle Balls, where she creates sentient robot law enforcement, decides they are too dangerous to exist and crushes all of them into square boxes. She seems to discount the moral wrongs in playing with life for the greater good. Although Princess Bubblegum has obviously neglected Lemon Grab, Adventure Time never outright betrays her negatively for this. But with that being said, Lemon Grab trying to get his mother's acceptance could be a motivation for Lemon Grab taking over the Candy Kingdom and wanting to have his own kingdom. As Finn and Jake are exploring the rest of the rooms of Lemon Castle, one is different. A large glass screen splits the room into two, there is a control panel on one side and the other side contains three small candy-like bodies that seem to have been electrocuted until a loss of consciousness. This is how Lemon Grab has been treating his citizens, torturing them relentlessly for thinking differently to him. Finn and Jake rush to help the candy citizens, but as they are entering the electricity room, the door closes and Lemon Grab reveals himself. Just when he is turning up the voltage, Princess Bubblegum enters the room. Lemon Grab, stop, please, I can help you. You're the one who made me this way! How can you help? Lemon Grab believes that his creator, his god, is incapable of helping him, but this idea is tested when Princess Bubblegum reveals what she brought with her. Wait, Lemon Grab, look! Am I in the right room? This is everything Lemon Grab wanted. Someone that can understand him and that accepts him for who he is. Something he has lacked his entire life. This is the first time we see Lemon Grab happy. It's a universally agreed upon psychological concept that people are a product of their environment plus their genes. The new Lemon Grab, I will from now on refer to him as Lemon White, is a technical copy of the original Lemon Grab. The difference is Lemon Grab's upbringing. From this we can see exactly how much Lemon Grab was affected by his neglect from Princess Bubblegum. Lemon White has the same mannerisms as Lemon Grab, but seems nicer. He isn't immediately hostile to Finn and Jake upon meeting them, and it was his idea to free the prisoners. He hasn't had a life of terrible treatment and isolation, and although he is extremely similar to Lemon Grab in the way he acts and thinks, he is a positive influence on him. Lemon White is where Princess Bubblegum and Frankenstein differ. Frankenstein never made a mate for his monster because he didn't want to spawn a race of horrible demon people, but PB saw that giving Lemon Grab a partner would make him happier and she did it regardless of any future risks. All Your Fault is the third time Lemon Grab shows up in Adventure Time. A lot of canonical time has passed since you made me, and the episode starts off with Princess Bubblegum receiving a letter from the Lemon Grabs. We are starving, send us your candy, how dare you. This is a very strange letter for PB to receive because she had already given them a literal lifetime supply of candy. She sends Finn and Jake to deliver the Lemon Grabs candy seeds so they can have a sustainable source, and tells them to be on the lookout for anything weird. When they arrive, something is off. The kingdom is filled with life. Hungry life. These weird Lovecraftian horrific demons are crawling around every inch of the kingdom. Finn and Jake make their way to the center and are met with a giant lemon person, Lemon John. Lemon John directs them to the residence of the Lemon Grabs. They have been in the dungeon for three weeks. The way to the Lemon Grabs is teeming with more disturbing lemon people. When Finn and Jake reach the Earls, they are told that Princess Bubblegum left the secret formula behind by accident, and so naturally the Lemon Grabs experimented with it and created life but creating life got addicting. It just felt so pretty okay inside, greeting each new placid face. They couldn't stop creating life and ended up using all the food in the kingdom to create life. 
which is why they are all starving. They blame PB for this entire situation. All her fault! What? What? What'd you say? I said all her fault! Oh, indeed! There's a lot to unpack here. The lemon grabs are essentially saying it is Princess Bubblegum's fault for them starving because she left the secret formula behind. In their minds, they have no accountability for their own actions. Their creator created them, so she should have full responsibility for everything they do. This way of thinking is a fundamental problem with how they are made, and is why I disagree with Princess Bubblegum making Lemon White. Accidentally making one sentient being and realizing it has problems that will cause it to be an outcast and almost incapable of enjoying life is one thing. Knowingly putting into the world more of these obviously tortured beings is a blatant disregard of any moral principles. The lemon grabs should feel responsibility over their own actions, but their literal incapability to is Princess Bubblegum's problem as their creator. This reality is what Frankenstein was worried about. Finn and Jake show the lemon grabs the seeds that they brought and they immediately use them to create more life. You really are gonna die! Finn suggests that they go to the Candy Kingdom and ask Princess Bubblegum for help. Instead of doing that, the lemon grabs tell all the lemon people that the hard times are over and that they will now take all the candy from the Candy Kingdom. It's your fault. We warned you. We warned you about us. Turns out the whole lemon grab kingdom is held up by Lemon John. Lemon John begins traveling towards the Candy Kingdom. As he is making his way there, Finn and Jake come up with a plan to kick his heart until he dies. They locate the heart, and Jake stretches and kicks it, but he doesn't die. Instead, Lemon John does something unexpected. He becomes the first lemon person to feel empathy. If I act, the candy people will suffer. If I don't act, the lemon people will suffer. This contradiction makes John come to the conclusion that he must die for the betterment of his society, and in an ultimate act of selflessness, he devolves himself into smaller candy pieces to create food for the lemon population. This interaction actually proves that it is possible for lemon people to feel empathy, it just takes a lot. In Lemon John's case, it took him being kicked in the heart. After Finn and Jake come back to the Candy Kingdom, they tell PB that Lemon John got kicked in the heart and was capable of feeling empathy. They suggest this could mean that there's something wrong with the Lemon Grabs' hearts. Oh, no no. Their hearts are fine. They're just like this. <laughs> the next sighting of the Lemon Grabs is in the episode 5 Short Grables. If you don't know what a Grables episode is, it's basically 5 short episodes put into one, but we're just going to focus on the Lemon Grab part. It starts off with the lemon grabs entering a dimly lit room. Wait, uh, trigger warning, cannibalism. Skip to this timestamp if you don't want to see cannibalism. Okay, so now I've weeded out the week, let's continue. The lemon grabs are playing with a dressed up lemon candy called Lemon Sweet. What would you like to do now? Go to bed. No, he wants to dance. This seemingly insignificant disagreement between the lemon grabs actually holds a lot of weight. Remember how I said the lemon grabs were exact copies of each other? Well, they still are, and them disagreeing on something means that it's entirely environmental. Lemon White is more empathetic and cares about Lemon Sweet's feelings and well-being. This is represented by him wanting Lemon Sweet to rest. Lemon Grab, on the other hand, is more focused on his personal entertainment, which is represented by him wanting Lemon Sweet to dance. This difference in personality is likely due to the fact that Lemon White has had someone that understands him to hang out with his entire life, whereas Lemon Grab has not, thus making Lemon White have more security in his relationships and being more likely to be empathetic. The Lemon Grabs get into an argument about this and Lemon White gets angry at his brother and hits him, causing Lemon Sweet to break on the ground. Lemon Grab, uh... Only This disagreement broke Lemon Grab's perception of Lemon White. To him, he was someone who was exactly like him and would always agree with him on every ground, and for this to no longer be true makes Lemon Grab view Lemon White as someone like Princess Bubblegum, who he doesn't feel any personal responsibility for affecting. This marks the beginning of the decline of Lemon Grab. In the episode Too Old, a significant amount of time has passed since the, uh, PB and Finn are going to a diplomatic dinner in Lemon Grab Kingdom. When they arrive, something feels different. The Lemon people are all wearing clothes and drinking wine. When Lemon Grab arrives, PB and Finn realize that he has changed. He is now overweight and next to him is Lemon White, who has half of his body missing. This physical difference goes in hand with further personality differences that Lemon Grabs have. When they go to dinner, Lemon Grab is hungry and takes food from the person sitting next to him. Lemon White sees that they have no food and gives them half of his own. 
The lemon grabs now have fundamentally different outlooks on life. Lemon White is empathetic and Lemon Grab only cares about himself. They also now hold different power statuses. Previously, the Lemon Grabs had an equal position in leadership, but now there was a very obvious power dynamic. Lemon Grab at this point is gross and impossible to emphasize with. His total disregard for his own people contradicts them being the only thing that gave him purpose in all your fault. Princess Bubblegum wanting to get away from this dynamic stumbles upon a Lemon Boy that seems different from the others. Lemon Hope. Instead of being weirdly mutated and screaming, he looks quite normal and plays a harp. This form of normality is seen as being an outcast in the Lemon Society, just like how Lemon people would be seen as outcasts in the Society of Ooh. PB asks the Lemon Grabs if she can take the boy home, but they say no and imprison him. Lemon Grab likely rejects her from taking in Lemon Hope because he is jealous of his mother accepting someone that isn't him. Finn and the princess are now determined to break out Lemon Hope, so they get intentionally imprisoned. Finn gives Lemon Hope his flute, and because he is so bad at playing the flute, the Lemon Grabs come to dance to it. Come one and all and join the dance! This is the final straw for Lemon Grab. How dare you release my prisoners? You've gone soft, Lemon Grab. Lemon Grab eats the rest of his brother as Finn, Princess Bubblegum, and Lemon Hope make an escape. As the three are trying to climb the wall to exit, a now significantly bigger Lemon Grab sees them, and this is when we're revealed to the most horrific thing Lemon Grab has ever done. You see these metal things on the Lemon people? These are actually dog collars placed around every lemon person's neck in order to torture them into compliance. This complete dehumanization of his citizens is disgusting and shows how far Lemon Grab has fallen. The lemon people are nearing closer and closer to Finn and PB, it seems like nothing can be done. But just as hope is almost lost, Lemon White vomits his body from Lemon Grab's mouth. Lemon Brothers, stop! Stop and listen! Lemon need not squeeze lemon to survive! Lemon hope! Go forth! Grow strong and return for us! Go! Everything is put onto Lemon Hope to save the Lemon civilization. He must return to Lemon Grab Kingdom and free his people from this corrupt dictator. But what does he want? <laughs> Okay, so in this next bit, focus shifts away from Lemon Grab and over to Lemon Hope, which I promise is going to be relevant to the overall Lemon Grab narrative, but we're following this guy now. Lemon Hope is taken back into the Candy Kingdom to be educated. Princess Bubblegum starts off by showing him a video of how terrible the Lemon Kingdom has become. Hmm. But Lemon Hope doesn't really care about the video, he's more focused on a drawing he's doing. Of himself. <laughs> you see, although Lemon Hope is definitely more normal than any other Lemon person, he is still a Lemon person, a result of a failed experiment. It's not that he doesn't want to care about other people, it's that caring about other people is not in his programming. This is best summarized by a conversation he has with PB. One day it will be your responsibility to save the Lemon people. I don't know, I've always just thought about me. I've got me and they have them, you know? This is a contradiction of sorts, because without the help from other people, Lemon Hope would still be in the Candy Kingdom suffering. Princess Bubblegum again tests Lemon Hope's lack of empathy by giving him two cupcakes and asking if he would give one to Finn. No, I want both cupcakes. Finn can get his own cupcakes. PB takes Lemon Hope to the outside of Lemon Grab Kingdom and shows him that because the people saved him, they are now suffering. Lemon Hope says that this is true, but he is free. He alone decides what he does and doesn't do. PB tells him that this way of thinking is unacceptable, causing him to associate her with Lemon Grab and instinctively run away. Freedom to run away. Lemon Hope begins traversing terrain and decides to stow away on a ship. The ship enters some kind of battle and moves rapidly, bashing a barrel into Lemon Hope's head and knocking him out. When he wakes up, he is on a desert, with his only source of food and water being limes from the ship. Weeks pass of Lemon Hope living life inside of the ruins of the ship. During his time in the desert, Lemon Hope has many disturbing dreams, one of which depicts Lemon Hope as a horse moving across the floor. Underneath him are pieces of bubble gum which he is avoiding stepping on. When he accidentally steps on one, he pulls it up to look at it, and Princess Bubblegum looks back at him. Unacceptable! This dream represents how Lemon Hope feels as if he is free, but only if he does what Bubblegum says. In Lemon Hope's mind, this kind of restrictive freedom is not freedom at all. Another common theme in Lemon Hope's dreams is Lemon Grab and the Lemon Kingdom. He can't seem to get the debt he has to them out of his head. Lemon Hope's obsession with freedom continues. Eventually his limes run out and he is dying of thirst. 
I guess if there's no juice, I have freedom to go and find water. He looks at the cloud in the distance. Why won't you rain cloud? Freedom to not rain, I guess. Lemon Hope becomes completely dehydrated and starts crawling aimlessly in the desert. He utters his final words, FREEDOM! and falls to the ground. Ah, 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 you fool, you thought he was dead? Lemon Hope wakes up to water being sprayed in his face by a pink man riding a cloud. Now, I'm not saying this is Princess Bubblegum, but his name, Flannel Boxing Day, has the same initials as the name Princess Bubblegum. He has the same amount of letters in his name as Princess Bubblegum, and the same amount of syllables. He speaks German, just like Princess Bubblegum. He has an understanding of science. His skin in the storyboard of the episode is referred to as PB skin. Uh, there's more, there's more stuff. The non-Princess Bubblegum man tells Lemon Hope he can help him not die, if he wants. It's his choice. Wow, so much freedom. The two get into Flannel's cloud ship thing, they catch a bird together, and Flannel asks Lemon Hope to be his apprentice. Days pass, Flannel Boxing Day and Lemon Hope are going on wacky adventures, but Lemon Hope is still getting these unsettling dreams. One dream involves a dull version of Lemon Hope traveling the void in chains and seeing Lemon Grab eating a cow. The cow says it's happy to see Lemon Hope. Lemon Grab then throws chains at Lemon Hope, which miss. The camera is then panned to reveal that the person controlling Lemon Hope this entire time was himself. This dream is about how Lemon Hope is no longer a prisoner to Lemon Grab. He is a prisoner to his mind. Flannel reinforces this idea. It's true you are free. Free to help the Lemon people, or to leave them be. But a debt unpaid is not easily forgotten, so you are still a prisoner, and Dane of Kampf. Ignoring the fact that Flannel just spoke German, a language Princess Bubblegum can also speak, this is the moment where Lemon Hope decides he has to help the Lemon people. Lemon Hope didn't change his views or morals or anything, he is still only acting in his best interests. He's not helping the Lemon people because he feels empathy for them, or because he cares. He's helping them to stop himself from feeling terrible all the time. Flannel tells Lemon Hope that he can't interact with the Lemon people because of pacts and treaties that prevent him from entering, so Lemon Hope must go alone. As he's entering the kingdom, he climbs a conveniently placed rope to get into the Lemon Castle and is immediately confronted by Lemon Grab. Looking for something? Well, you found me! Fat Lemon Grab! Lemon Grab is blinded by his own ego and doesn't fear him at all. He shows Lemon Hope that he has things in his ears, so Lemon Hope's heart will not be able to do anything. As he is explaining this to Lemon Hope, Lemon White vomits what's left of him from his stomach and takes the things out of Lemon Grab's ears. The Lemon people create a wall and hold Lemon Grab down. Oh, 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 this hurts. The Lemon People are generally irritated by nice sounds, but Lemon Grab is so detached from anything remotely good or nice that Lemon Hope's harp actually kills him, killing Lemon White inside of him. Lemon Hope now has his final dream. He is in a dark building and hears a knocking to which he responds, I'm coming. When he reaches the door, he walks up to a bird's nest and sits with the birds. He is not one of them, but they accept him. The birds are a metaphor for the Lemon people, and this dream signifies that Lemon Hope is now truly mentally free. He is then awoken by Princess Bubblegum. She tells him she made a room for him, and he can stay in the Lemon Kingdom and be a hero to the Lemon people. Nah, that's okay. Oh, but I thought... I mean, you guys are cool and all, but I mostly came back here so I could stop thinking about y'all all the time. Lemon Hope's way of existence isn't necessarily bad. He won't go out of his way to harm anyone, but he also won't go out of his way to help anyone. He is completely neutral and just wants freedom. It's sad to see that Lemon Hope didn't end up changing, but some people just don't change. Or do they? In a fast forward to the future, we see a much older Lemon Hope living in a land that resembles a broken down post-apocalyptic ooh. Lemon Hope makes his way through the uninhabited Candy Kingdom, past Finn and Jake's treehouse, into a deserted Lemon Kingdom. He lays on the bed Princess Bubblegum made for him all those years ago, and closes his eyes, smiling. Although Lemon Hope's story has concluded, Lemon Grabs hasn't. After Lemon Hope defeated Lemon Grab, Princess Bubblegum realized that the Lemon Kingdom needed a new ruler and rebirthed Lemon Grab from pieces of dead Lemon Grab and Lemon White. It's important to understand that like how a child isn't either of their parents, this isn't Lemon Grab or Lemon White. 
The final Lemon Grab episode, The Mountain, takes place a season after Lemon Hope Part 2, so a lot of time has passed since New Lemon Grab's conception. He is ruling the Lemon Kingdom by himself and seems to have a good idea of what his people want. Maybe the combining of the two Lemon Grabs created a more well-rounded individual capable of better understanding his citizens. Everyone in Lemon Kingdom are cogs in a machine to produce food for the whole system to survive on. They seem to be happy like this, or at least far happier than they were under rule of original Lemon Grab. Lemon Grab calls lights out and everyone in the kingdom goes to sleep. As he is going to bed, he looks up at the tapestry on his roof. The tapestry cracks and this makes Lemon Grab uneasy, and he leaves his castle to go to the mountain seen in the tapestry. This could represent how Lemongrab feels his own mind is broken because the crack was on one of the people in the artwork's heads. As Lemongrab is entering the mountain, Finn and Jake who are stargazing see him from a distance and decide to check out what he's doing. The mountain only lets Finn in and leaves Jake outside to wait. This part will make sense later. The episode then cuts back to Lemongrab who has travelled deep inside of the mountain. He enters an opening containing three doors. A voice in the background says, To reach me, you must choose correctly. The first door contains Princess Bubblegum wearing a catcher's mitt. Come, Earl of Lemongrab, let us play the game of catch. I am eager to relate to you. The second door contains Lemon Hope ruling over the Lemon People and destroying all of the order Lemon Grab had bestowed upon the Lemon Kingdom. And the third door contains Lemon Grab's past selves fighting over the Lemon Suite. These three doors represent desire, fear, and self. Lemon Grab chooses self and falls into a lemony terrain. Gladness all over, rolling in grease. Taste the grease, Lemon Grab. Okay. It's Lemony! Lemon Grab looks up to realize he's climbing on himself. I am Grease? He is looking into himself for the first time and seeing himself for who he is. He is Grease. Finn also chooses self, which is represented by his past reincarnation of a butterfly. He rides the butterfly into a clearance and meets Lemon Grab, who is talking to a cloud. Matthew. The meat bodies who've journeyed to this mountain have distilled themselves to their original source materials and now exist in oneness. Matthew is asking Finn and Lemongrab to join him. He takes in people who feel like they have something missing and gives them meaning. Matthew is comparable to a cult or church. Is this why you're here, Lemongrab? To merge with Matthew? It is one option to know the ecstasy of my ego death. An ego death is a complete loss of self-identity. Lemon Grab is no longer himself, he is someone made of parts of others who have memories that are not his. Becoming one with Matthew is an option because it would give him the meaning and purpose he desires in his new form. Here's my other option. You see these Lemon Johns? These Lemon Johns are me, and I wonder if they can destroy you. Matthew is a living being made from others, a sanctuary for those living in fear who could not find peace in themselves, waiting to live an unforeseeable future. A selfish creation. Lemon John is dead but lives on as a memory and found peace by dissolving himself to assure the survival of others living in the present. A selfless creation. I'm not 100% sure on this one, but I think this is why the Lemon Johns have the power to destroy Matthew. If you are the head that floats atop the ziggurat, then the stairs that lead to you must be infinite. Lemon Grab is saying that if Matthew represents the perfection of oneself, which is portrayed by a ziggurat, a type of ancient temple, that the way to get to this temple, the staircase, is infinite because perfection is impossible. He instead chooses to accept the imperfections in himself and throws the Lemon Johns into the mouth of Matthew, destroying him. Infinite stairs are unacceptable! <laughs> When Matthew explodes, lots of people wearing white cloaks come out of him. They aren't perfect or part of something greater, they are lost, confused souls, devoid of any personality. One of them immediately, uh... And the others just attack Lemon Grab for destroying the purpose. These people all used to be individuals, but they had that individuality stripped away from them by Matthew. Lemon Grab and Finn escape and leave the mountain. This is a big evolution for Lemon Grab. It marks the end of him screaming to Princess Bubblegum about how she made him like this. He is imperfect, he has flaws, he is unique, and he finally accepts himself. This is the end of Lemon Grab's journey, and it proves that people can change, even if they are lemon people who don't fit in and scream at their problems. 
This lemon population of Adventure Time represents all the outcasts and types of people that society don't accept. There's so much beauty and color to be found in every type of living thing. There's stories to be told and experiences to be had. Lemon Grab's story is something that evolved from a person who was the result of a failed experiment into a population of different unique individuals who live their own independent and interesting lives. Without him, there would be no Lemon Hope or Lemon John. When coming back from the mountain, Lemon Grab falls into his room and onto his bed. He is met with the crack in his roof. He simply chews a Lemon John and spits it into the crack, filling the hole. Problem solved. Yo, yo, it's Grease! Wow, you watched the entire video. Thanks for, for doing that. You can you can like the video if you liked it. I put a lot of work into it, so that would be good. Uh, I also made a different video about Jake and the episode Ocarina, so please check that out. Click, click it right now. Click it right now. <laughs>